Hello everyone, I am Toriar and welcome to another one of my House of Iron 4 challenges. Today we're going to play as Czechoslovakia and the goal is to remain democratic and join the Allies and beat the Germans. Regular difficulty, Ironman mode, historical focuses. You have been requesting this challenge since I started doing challenges basically, so I'm finally going to do it. And I did have a foolproof strategy that worked amazingly for that, however... Mm, however, the new patch, the new DLC, basically invalidated that by introducing limits on special forces. If you watch this channel, you already know what I think about this limit. Onto the game. Again, our goal is to stay democratic, or even become more democratic, join the Allies and resist the German attack, then strike back at Germany until Germany capitulates. Normally I would do this by investing heavily in mountaineers, but we're not allowed to do that anymore, for some reason. Um, so I'm going to have to improvise a little bit. In order to achieve our goals, we will have to do a few things. One of them is just protect our borders from the German attack. Because yes, we do have to refuse Sudetenland and weather the German attack. And for that we'll need some fortifications and troops. And the other thing we need to do is invest in our air force so they can't bomb us. Because if their bombers get in our territory, we're done for. They'll just destroy our forts and invade us. Okay, we have 14 focuses we can do before the attack, more or less. We're going to start with political direction, because I want to do defensive preparations, and that requires a lot of democratic support. Next up, I want to have as much manpower in the field as possible, as many units in the field as possible, so I'm going to be training cavalry. Uh, why? Well, we're not going to be using cavalry, we're just going to be training cavalry, because it takes less manpower and equipment to deploy them, and we'll be deploying them ahead of time anyway. Also make sure they are the highest priority. Next up are factories. We will need to build up our civilian industry a little bit, and then we'll need to build up a lot of forts. We will also need to protect our airspace, so there are two things we can do. There's uh, fighters and there's heavy fighters. Heavy fighters are generally superior, but they take more manpower. Yeah, I'm going to invest in heavy fighters. For now, I'm going to set all my factories to just produce infantry equipment. We're not going to be needing support equipment. Support equipment is great if you have enough production capabilities, but we have very limited time. And that is about it. Speed the game up and then pause. Now we have enough political power to modify our government, and I'm going to switch to free trade. Yeah, we'll be focusing heavily on fighter production once we have the technology. Democratic Bastion done, we're waiting to get enough support for democracy to do this one. Uh, however, we also need to mm, fulfill this path and this path. As for all the political power we have, I'm going to move to partial mobilization, so we get a few more factories working. Yeah, I'm going to assign eight factories to the heavy fighters. That might be a bit too much, our infantry equipment production will suffer, um, but I'll get some more military factories later on. Let's invest our political power in infantry equipment. We will be doing a lot of that. Oh crap, I forgot. I should have invested... Yeah, that's a mistake on my part. I should have invested in this, because the extra reliability... Mm, the extra reliability on the heavy fighter would have made a big difference. So that's a mistake. If you're trying to replicate my strategy, you need to do this before you finish your heavy fighter research. We're going to be significantly weaker because I forgot to do that. Well, damn it. Now, with the United Population done, we can move on to doing fortifications. And each of those focuses will give us some population uh, that we can recruit. And the final one will give us seven level forts all along uh, the German border. But we still have to secure the Hungarian and the Polish border. And those forts from those focuses will not be sufficient. Uh, but we can we can ignore the fallback line and internal redounds. Um, okay, let's do fortification studies. Let's get the army defense expert. Hey, we're actually training units, and yes, cavalry, but we're going to be switching them over later on. A few more military factories, and then we can focus on the forts. I should probably deploy all of them already, so that the manpower can go towards the next round of those recruits. I'm finishing up my factories, and then moving on to constructing forts on the Hungarian, Romanian, and Polish borders. Now, I need to construct them before I do these focuses, because, see, these focuses, fortification studies, and until Sudetenland, they set fort level to 7. These add fort level. And the higher you build up the fort, the more expensive it is. So our intention is to build up our forts to level 5 on the Polish border, and to level 4 on the Hungarian border, and then do these focuses, which will bring them both to level 7. Okay, and we can do Beacon of Liberty, which will lead to defensive preparations, which are actually what we need. Yeah, I went over overboard on the fighters, we don't need that many. Defensive preparations are done. Uh, we don't have much time left. Let's use 600 heavy fighters in one unit. 
Let's deploy a few more and then send them to the front lines. I have made three full armies. We're going to assign them to a field marshal. Those three armies should be sufficient. Actually, I could use the frontline command rather than the fallback line and then just delete it. Because, um, yeah, keeping the frontline command is uh, buggy. Yeah, this way they'll distribute slightly differently. Now, I'm not going to be using the field marshal level orders uh, because they're buggy as hell. Uh, but I'm going to keep them in the field marshal's army so they all get the bonuses. And we're going to assign them to the Polish and Hungarian borders, but not through the frontline order. Because when Germany starts taking Poland, yeah, that would bug out. We're going to be using the fallback line order instead. Now, I need to change all the units, apart from mountaineers and what is already infantry, in those main frontline units into infantry. They're going to require extra manpower and they're going to lose some experience, um, but that's fine. They are all infantry and mountaineers. Now I'm going to use my extra experience to make them 20 with infantry and mountaineers. Let's make sure to assign our planes properly. They're all going to be assigned to our airspace. And I'm also going to sacrifice some of our command point to get an efficiency boost. Then we go to level 5 all along the Polish border, and to level 4 on the Hungarian border. I hope we'll have enough time to finish those. That pretty much does it. Our forces are very weak, they don't have a lot of equipment, and they don't have full manpower, but with the aid of our forts and air support, they should be able to withstand the German attack, and will gradually supply them with extra equipment. Actually, I shouldn't have done strategic decisions, I should have done arms exports instead. Okay, the Munich Diktat. That is the thing. That is the attack. That is the Germans demanding our stuff. Of course, we're not going to give it to them. And how much time do we have? 13 days left. Let's delay this as much as possible. Uh, right, we will never surrender. Oh, right, we were guaranteed by Romania. Romania has been called in. It's possible we'll be sent some expeditionary forces. I will use them to reinforce our border with the Germans, of course. Strategic decisions, and we're joining the Allies. Yes, we are. I'm not sure when Hungary will join the Axis. This is a big mystery. If they join the Axis too early, we could be in a bit of trouble. Um, but I am, I am garrisoning the border, so we should be fine. As you can see, we have major air superiority. Even if the Germans start sending planes here, they will not stand a chance. It's a pity we have to. Um, but we kind of have to. Alright, Germany is still afraid of our force. They're not attacking. That is good news. Ah, expeditionary force from Romania. Yes, gladly. He's got a great moustache. Our troops are inexperienced and badly equipped. But there's a lot of them, and that would be enough. That will be enough for defense. Now, they're going to be disappointed because their bombers cannot get past our aerial defense. They're trying to, but they can't. If they joined Axis, Motov Ribbentrop Pact, yeah. And now Germany is justifying a war goal against Poland. Oh, the British have taken uh, Ostprussen. That's interesting. Germany is at war with Belgium already. Doctrinal innovation is done. Now we need to do the Polish line. Just to make sure that once Germany takes Poland, they won't be able to invade us from there. Right, Poland refuses the German ultimatum, which means the Germans are about to attack. And they've joined the Allies. Now we're not going to... We could theoretically help Poland defend, but that's not something we could succeed in. So we're just going to stay in our territory and defend against the German attack. Poland is not doing too badly defending. I mean, they'll fail, but um, there are now some... You know, they're not fighting on two fronts anymore. And there are now some British and French horses here. That is not going to be enough to defend, and perhaps we could have helped them. And I would kind of want to, since I'm Polish myself. Um, but that would not be wise, because Germany will eventually break through, and that would just weaken us. We're weakening Germany, but by making them sit on our border. And that might just be enough to give uh, the Polish an edge, although probably not. Ah, more Romanian volunteers. Wonderful. Let's get that design company for the heavy fighters, so the next level will actually be good. Mutinies in the army, really? Ah, I hate those events, but we do have the political power to spare, so yeah, sure. Let's hold a patriotic speech. Our guys are actually doing, I mean, our allies here are actually doing much better than I expected them to be. Perhaps I should move one of our armies here 
and help the Polish. Although, yeah, the Italians are getting into France, and once France is taken, the Germans will focus on us heavily, and we don't have enough strength uh, to break through their defense, I'm pretty sure of that. But it seems like the war is going our way, so this might actually turn out to be very, very easy. You might be wondering why the Germans are not attacking us. Well, they are not attacking us because they can't beat our forts. And they can't beat our forts because we're not letting their bombers into our territory, maintaining air superiority, so they can't bomb us. The Allies are doing so well against Germany in this game, I'm not really sure why maybe Germany was hit with a bad event early on, that it is tempting to join the attack and try to push towards a victory, um, but that is probably not a great idea, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just stay in my territory. Why? Well, because it is very likely that the Allies will be at war with the Soviet Union relatively soon. Because Molotov Ribbentrop is not enforced, as Poland has not capitulated, and that means Germany didn't give the Soviet Union Polish territory, so it is very likely that the Soviets will actually attack Poland, and that would put them at war with the Allies, that means Poland and Romania are destroyed, Germany doesn't have to fight on both fronts, and moves over and destroys France easily. Possibly. Actually, since we are preparing for an attack from Hungary, which will happen eventually, I should probably deploy some more planes to cover this area, because we won't be able to, you know, defend our force here. Mm, let's say 200 heavy fighters, that should be sufficient. Our new plane has been researched. Let's make sure we also get a variant. Of heavy fighter 2. Increase range and weapons slightly and increase reliability as much as possible. The longer this goes on for, the stronger the allies will be in relation to Germany. The Soviet Union is just fine with Romania. Now, Romania will give them Bessarabia, and so we'll be fine on that. Although, if or rather when they attack Poland, things will not be as easy. Crap strikes. Yeah, we need to address that immediately. Ah, infantry advancement is done. This should let us research this immediately. Yes, one day the focus is at work. They are justifying Latvia, which means Latvia is going to get an event very shortly, which in all likelihood is going to cause them to be annexed by the Soviets. Strikes again? I just addressed that. All right, election wartime exemption. Exception, again, lose stability or gain stability but lose uh, support. Yeah, I'll do that one. Ah, crap, Hungary joins the Axis. Uh, that means they will attack us. Um, and, well, I have fortified the border quite well, so we should be fine. How is my air superiority? Hmm, I don't have air superiority. I don't have air superiority. I probably need to deploy some more planes. Do we have the planes to deploy? Let's get another 100. Soviet Union is justifying against Poland. Uh, yeah, they're doing demand eastern Poland. I wonder, actually, it would be good for us if Poland surrendered now, if they surrendered to the Germans, because that would mean um, we would not be at war. I mean, the Allies would not be at war with the Soviet Union, which, which is going to be devastating the war, I mean. If Poland would capitulate before the Soviets attack, that means the Soviets would not attack, and that thus um, Romania would survive. They finished the focus and Poland has refused, which means they have a war goal on Poland, which they could act on any minute now. Now, if Poland capitulates quickly... Nope. Nope. Damn it. Well, that means Romania's done for. Poland has capitulated, if only they capitulated a little bit earlier. Now, I'm not going to join the war against the Soviet Union, because I am not suicidal. Ah, yeah, okay. USSR occupies Eastern Poland. That's actually good for us, because as we are not at war with them, uh, these provinces are safe from attack. France is still holding on, which is good. If we... yeah, Romania has capitulated, but we still have their expeditionary forces. If we can have the Soviets go to war against uh, the Axis before France is defeated, uh, that would actually be very good for us. Belgium is actually pushing into Germany, and so is France. Interesting. But Germany now does not have to fight Poland. So they should be able to dedicate more forces to the French front. On the other hand, they now have a very long border with us, which is well fortified, and they have to keep troops here to defend against a potential attack from us, which means they won't be able to devote that many troops over here, which could be a good thing. See, the Hungarians are scared of our defenses and they're not attacking. Polish-Romanian allies, really, why? They are both in the Allies and they are both capitulated. Also, the Netherlands have not joined the war. Yugoslavia joined allies, even though they are the aggressor against poor little Bulgaria. Oh, the Germans were not defending this border. That might actually be good for us. Oh, right, Croatia, I forgot about that. And they joined Comintern. 
US volunteers, yes please. The Soviets will actually take over Greece as well, probably. Should I go to all adults serve? I probably should. Then we should bank up all that manpower. When the Soviets start pushing, we start pushing as well, because the Germans cannot resist the Soviets. France has capitulated, and it all went to Italy, which might be a problem, because Italy is actually pretty good at holding that territory. Oh, we're under attack. And this is only three fort levels. You know what, I'm going total mobilization. Surrounded by enemies. Japan declared war on the Philippines, which means the US is getting into the war soon. Also, we're under attack here. The United States joined the Allies. Mutinies in the army, really? Well, crap. What we're waiting for now is for the Soviets to squash the Germans. But the longer they wait, the more difficult it's going to be for them. Right, let's train all these guys up, the newly deployed forces, that is. I can then start replacing them on the front lines and train the ones that, you know, go back. Mutinies in the army again. Does the same thing again. Well, I hate those events. Did I mention that? Finally getting rid of mutinies. Come on, Soviets, attack the Germans already. Yeah, the Soviets and the Germans still don't seem uh, like they would like to fight each other, which is a big problem for us. It might make it almost impossible for us to win. I need to get nukes. In the meantime, I keep training my troops and replacing them in the armies so that all of them are trained to the maximum. We have mobilized all the manpower we could mobilize. So now I'm going to institute the women in the workforce decision so we can mobilize some more. And once we do that, then I do scraping the barrel. And now, and once we mobilize all of that, then I can go down to extensive conscription. Seriously, if the war between Germany and the Soviet Union never breaks out, this will be like the most boring challenge ever. Why are you not going to attack them? Come on. Oh. Someone has sent a nuke to Berlin. Also, they used air superiority that we made for that, so yay. We're helping. Munich has just been bombed nuclearly. Is that how you say that, nuclearly? We have capped our manpower. And if I change my manpower laws now, we will not lose the ones that we already have. So, extensive conscription for us. And total mobilization. Let's start modifying our templates a little bit. And let's see how much equipment we'll actually need for that. We have our first nuke. And I'm adding support companies to our units. Not sure if they're really necessary. I could probably just attack. But let's let's try and make them as strong as we can. Because we're just Czechoslovakia and we're pretty much on our own. Because uh, the Allies are not in, in a good position. Although India seems to be doing okay. But there's no Allied presence in Europe. Almost. No allied presence in Europe. Even Ireland was invaded by Italy. The last year of the game is about to start. 1948. And we're pretty much ready to attack Germany. I'm still filling some gaps in our unit's equipment. We still need to produce a little bit more rocket artillery. A little bit more support equipment. And a little bit more infantry equipment. But we're almost ready. At the moment we have 4.7 million troops in the field and mm, they are in units like this 40 with infantry with four support companies support art artillery support rocket artillery engineers recon and signal companies and mountaineers without support companies and they are slightly stronger than uh, our normal infantry and that is about it i'm just waiting for uh, some more equipment to be produced, and then we'll see if within this year, or if at all, we can capitulate the Germans. Also, um, I think this is a pretty unique run. I have never before uh, had a game in which, without my interference, like annexing Germany, uh, German, um, Germany and the Soviet Union have not declared war on each other. Oh. Oh. Japan has capitulated. I should have joined that war. We would have gotten something, probably. Let's have a look. Uh, Japan was turned to the Allied side. And that is about it. Nothing else. What? <laughs> State of Japan has now capitulated to the Soviets. In a second. How did that happen? You know what? I think there's no point in waiting any longer. Our troops are nearly at 100% fighting strength. And... Uh, yeah, it's about time we attacked. It's already May, and by the end of the year the game will be over. So uh, let's 
do it. The allies proved to be really useless in this game, but let's see if we can turn it around for everyone. Time to attack. I'm not using the field marshal orders because they're buggy. Go! Balanced everyone. Balanced stance. The enemy of course have entrenched themselves. Uh, but perhaps we can break through. We have air superiority everywhere. We're using um, all those support companies that give us extra soft attack and uh, initiative and all that. Um, let's see if that is enough. All right, it's going well, it's going well. Hmm, apparently we're giving Polish territory back to Poland, but um, I don't mind. Although no, I do mind actually. I do mind because then the Soviets can walk in there. Hmm. That could become a problem for us. Boom. Nuke him. Yeah, let's nuke them a bit. That should open up large gaps in the front lines. The tactical nuking of the German border. Vienna. Sorry about that. Let's keep a few nukes, just in case. I wish you could not give land back to your allies. The Soviets are just walking in here. Apparently I'm out of manpower, which is unfortunate, but we should, st we should still have enough impact to uh, make Germany capitulate. Oh, I used up all my nukes. That's unfortunate. We were making gains, but uh, we already ran out of manpower. And we can't attack, uh, we can't do, you know, surrounding maneuver from Polish territory because the Soviets are just taking it. I mean it's not looking great but we are constantly making gains although not everywhere we're losing territory in some places. See the allies have like 300 troops here 400 maybe even um, but they're just sitting there perhaps if I took a port yeah, I'm just researching whatever I already have everything I need. I'm st I still have the army defense expert well that's a mistake should be using the army offense expert or the army morale genius. Let's use the army morale genius. That that's a, that's a major mistake. I should not have done that. You know what? I should probably go aggressive. We're out of manpower anyway, and many of our troops uh, can't advance because their organization is too low. Well, with that, you will be able to advance even if your organization is too low, and we should be able to at least push it a little bit. Perhaps if we get a port, the allies will actually do something for once. Can we maintain enough momentum? I'm not sure. How many casualties did we cause? We have taken 1 million casualties, the Germans have taken 3 million casualties. And we have a port. Is that going to be enough for us to get some reinforcements from the allies? I don't know. Is Berlin ours? Almost. Let's push for Berlin. Let's try to capture the coast. Hey, we have our first dockyard ever. I need more steel. You know what I need to do? I need to go to closed economy. Or at least limited exports. Then we'll get more resources. Turkey joined allies. Cool. Is that going to help us? I don't think so. Don't just get killed by the Soviets. We can't really manage to push into Hungary, but we're doing fine on Germany. And Germany is very, very close to capitulation. How about we nuke Hanover? Yeah, to take it. Let's take Wilhelmshaven. It has a victory point. And finally, yes, Germany has capitulated. Thank you very much. And that actually means we have fulfilled the challenge. I suppose we've gone so far. Perhaps we can finish that before the end of the game. I suppose I might want to use the field marshal orders now. Let's see if that will fail horribly. So, can you guys finish the whole war for me? Hey, 41% participation. Might be able to annex Germany. At least in part. Alright, let's let this run for a while. We should be able to at least make some gains. Due to Ribbentrop Molotov, Germany has just occupied Western Poland. <laughs> should we nuke Budapest? Yes, we should. France has essentially been retaken. Hungary has capitulated. Nice. Did I get their territory? Yes. Yes, I did. Switzerland is getting all of Italy. I don't like that. That's better. Our excursion into Spain seems to be rather successful. And same with Italy and France. So, yeah, we have 
We have fought the hardest battle in Germany, the rest is not that bad. Seems like Italy doesn't have that much time left, and yep, Italy has capitulated. Hmm, but a large chunk went to the US. They don't deserve it. They did almost nothing here, just invaded a few provinces. Oh well, it's fine. Now, let's reassign everyone to Spain. Well, almost everyone. Everyone from here. And only once they're done cleaning up uh, the remnants. A large amount of reinforcements is now moving towards Spain. They seem to all have arrived, well, almost all of them, and we're pushing nicely. So, how much more? Not that much more. Yeah, they don't seem to be able to resist our attack. Let's nuke their capital and... Oh, yeah, they have surrendered. They have surrendered and we have nuked them at the very end. Now that means we're about to get a peace conference. And the war is over. Now unfortunately we can't puppet people. Um, but we can, we can just take territory. And that's what we're going to do. Oh, right, that is the end of the peace conference. Let's see how much we got. I probably could have done it better, but it's, you know, it's mostly cosmetic at this point. Because we're ending the game right now. All right, we have 594 factories. We have taken most of Germany, half of Poland, um, like almost all of Italy, bits of Bulgaria, and we did a lot of border go in Spain. Because... You know, the British wanted to take it for themselves. We won't allow that. That is the end of this challenge. Czechoslovakia versus Germany. Essentially, because the Allies didn't really do anything today. So, um, yeah. Patience and good troops. And again, this is the division template I used. And some mountaineers to that. Uh, let's end the challenge here. Thank you for watching. It was very long and very weird, especially the fact that Germans never fought the Russians. Let me know in the comments what you think about this video, and of course, make sure to suggest my next challenge. Also, make sure to check the description for a playlist containing all my challenges, as well as a Patreon link if you would like to support the channel. That is it for today. Thanks for watching again. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.